Notice that I said that frequency distributions can be written as a table, which is what we did on this previous page, or chart, that's another way to say it, um, or graph. So let's look at a bar graph, also known as a bar chart, so whichever way you want to think about it. It's a graph in which the frequency or relative frequency of variables are represented by the length of rectangles. Now, there's a lot of caveats to this. So you have your variables that are qualitative. Your bars can be, um, these are the bars. Bars can be vertical or horizontal. The rectangles all have to be the same width, or I guess bars <laughs> have to be the same width, and they do not touch each other. And the axes should be labeled, especially the frequency relative frequency axis. And your graph should be two dimensional. It shouldn't look like somebody's drawing boxes on the page. They should be flat looking. All right, so we are going to construct a bar chart for our data. Now, I apologize. I accidentally have Twitch in here, which I did not mean to have. Um, that should not be there. So I'm going to take that away, even though Twitch is lovely. Um, but I'm going to put Twitter over here. I'm going to erase Twitter and put none. So I will fix this for future. So if you're watching this in a later semester, this won't be here and it won't be a problem. But I apologize. It is a problem right now. All right, I can label my axes right now, and I'm, I'm going to put a line in here for future for us to label. But these are the social media app. So social media app is the label for this axis. These are the social media apps. And over here, I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, so that must be frequency. Another word you'll see sometimes is number um, or count. Those are all fine. They all mean the same thing. Okay, so I want to draw rectangles that are equally spaced and equal width, and they have the height that is equal to our values. So the frequency for Facebook was 2. So I'm going to put a bar right here at 2. Now the trick is I have to make it so the other bars all match, <laughs> which I should have probably measured that Facebook bar when I put it down. Let's see here. And of course I didn't pick anything lovely. Maybe it's a couple centimeters. Nope, it's about one and a half centimeters. Okay, so for Instagram, I wanna go one and a half centimeters also. So if I go one and a half, it's about, yeah, one and a half. So then Instagram's gonna go right here and be about one and a half. There we go. And now I want Instagram to go up to as high as eight. So I'm gonna use my ruler. I'm gonna go up to eight straight down, up to eight, straight down. I should have measured before I drew the first one, but that's all right. All right, now I'm gonna do Snapchat, same thing. So one and a half centimeters. So it looks like it's about here and here. Eh, I'll do the same thing for Twitter. Let's just get these over the way. I keep smudging Twitter because Twitter was written on whiteout, so I apologize, I'll fix that. One and a half, and then here's none one and a half. Okay, so Snapchat's the tallest. It has to go to a height of 13. So I'm going to try to draw this really straight right there and then right over here. And if you're thinking, wow, this would be a lot easier with a computer. Yes, it would. Oops. See right there? I just nudged it accidentally. There we go. That's as good as I'm going to do. And then Twitter was four. So one, two, three, four. And then none was two again. And then I'll draw horizontal bars. And I'll show you how to do this in StatCrunch. It's a lot easier. And of course, StatCrunch will be more accurate because, well, it's a computer. <laughs> and sometimes they'll put values up here. Sometimes you'll see, you know, two, eight, 13, four, two. Sometimes they will do that, sometimes they won't. It's not required or anything. Sorry, that smudginess is bothering me, I apologize. I'll try to fix that. <laughs> so this was none, it looks like noon, but none, and this was Twitter. All right, now let's see how this would look in StatCrunch. It's not, it's not too difficult at all, but it is a window. I'm not even gonna bother you showing you that on a calculator there's no point all right so we go to the graph you just let your mouse hover you don't have to click and we're trying to do a bar plot 
And data means you actually have the list, like Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, 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 Snapchat, right, which we don't have. We have a summary. So we know there were two people in Facebook. It's summarized for us, eight people in Instagram. So we're gonna click with summary for this particular problem. Our categories were in the social media app column. Our counts, well, this is how it's gonna vary. So you can either choose frequency or relative frequency. So I'm gonna choose this one to be frequency where I'm not worried about. Um, I'll just leave that at frequency, value ascending. Oh, I want to order by, yeah, let's do this, value ascending. That's going to put them, these social media values are in order. So it might flip the none of these around, but that's okay. Actually, maybe if I leave it as a worksheet, that might work better. And then click compute, and let's see what happens. Oh, if you want the value above the bar, let me click that so you can see. And there you have it. Yes, worksheet worked. Um, if I clicked value ascending, it would have rearranged them into alphabetical order. So it would have put the none in between Instagram and Snapchat, which wasn't really where I wanted it. So by leaving it as a worksheet, it worked out fine. Now you'll notice the bars are all equal width, they're vertical, and you can see that they're not touching. All right, now the question becomes, what would it do if I made this a relative frequency graph? So let me go back to graph click bar graph, click with summary because we don't have the original data here. So we don't have a table or we don't have, you know, four Twitters and so on. We just have it categorized or summarized for us. So I'm gonna click social media app, counts are in relative frequency. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna leave that as frequency. I'm gonna click worksheet so that way it keeps the order I want. And then, uh, let's see here, I don't need the values above the bar. I mean, I guess I can. I'll just put them above the bar for fun. But it, it's not required or anything. Look at that graph right there. And then look at this graph right here, because this answers the next question, which is how do these graphs differ? And the answer is they kind of don't, right? They're the same graph. What's different about them is the label over here on the left. Oh, and it should say relative frequency. That was the mistake I made. All right, so if I go back to options and click edit, I'll get back to the menu I had. That's the mistake I made right there with type, right? This is basically when you're telling it, what do you want to label that axis? You know, what type of data have we got here? And we have relative frequencies, so I should have clicked that. So when I click compute, it'll change, there it goes. It changes the chart title over, I mean, the vertical axis title. So the vertical axis now says relative frequency instead of frequency. And you can see that otherwise the bars are identical in height. What's different is those numbers, the scale on the left-hand side. So instead of going 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, it's now going 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So it's going to use decimals instead. That's the difference. So that would answer this question down here. So we would, the vertical axis label would become relative frequency. Or you can do percents. Um, percents are relative frequency written in percent form. And then the vertical axis, uh, vertical axis numbers, or scale, I guess I should say, would use relative frequencies and decimals. So it could be decimals, it could be percents, it just depends on what you want to look at. So decimals or percents. That's how it's different. Otherwise, the graphs are the same. So in other words, it's your scale that's changing. And of course, if you do choose to put the labels like two, eight, and so on, then those would change into decimals as well. But that wasn't really required for the graph. That's just a fun side note. Now, a Pareto chart follows up right on this because a Pareto chart is a bar chart, but it goes in order from um, decreasing order of frequencies. So you start off with your most frequent on the left and you work your way to your least frequent over on the right. That's what they're telling you. It's a decreasing order of frequency. Well, StatCrunch had that option too. I don't know if you noticed it. So let's go back to StatCrunch real quick. So if I go to graph and say I want a bar chart, 
because a Pareto chart is a special kind of bar chart. It's a bar chart that goes in order. Again, we still have summary data that hasn't changed. Our categories are still social media app. Our counts, I can do frequency, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't change it much if I did relative frequency. All right, so I'll leave it as frequency because these are going to be frequencies, but this is where we change our order. Rather than worksheet, which is doing Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, and so on, I want to go by the count, the frequencies, and I want them to be descending. I want it to start at its highest value and descend down into its bottom value. And again, if you want the values above the bar, you can have them. Otherwise, you don't need them. It's your choice. And then click compute. And there it is. It's the same graph as this frequency graph, but it rearranged the order from the highest down to the lowest. And the lowest ones, it doesn't make any difference. It just put them in whatever order it felt like. All right, so now we have to copy this onto our page. <laughs> so Snapchat has the highest, then Instagram, then Twitter, then Facebook, and so on. So let's grab our Pareto chart graph here. So I will measure this out ahead of time. <laughs> So let's see if I've got one and a half centimeters. So one and a half. There we go. That would be Snapchat. And then I'll give it a little space, like a half a centimeter, and then I'll give it another one and a half. And that would be Instagram. And then I'll give it a little space and then another one and a half. And that is, uh, let's see, Twitter. And then if you're thinking, wow, it's so much easier if I could just print that graph off of StatCrunch, yes. And if you have a printer, you can, or even without a printer. All right, so one and a half right here. That's Facebook. And then let's see, one and a half, that's none. All right, I could have done two centimeters probably, but that's all right. All right, so this is gonna go up to 13 on both sides. And get connected. This is gonna go up to eight on both sides and get connected. Four, I probably don't even need a ruler for that. There's four. Oh, except I didn't go up to four. I went to three. Oh, I, just, I got too, I got too arrogant there. Too big for my britches, as my grandparents used to say. All right, and there's two. And there's two. Obviously, a ruler is best for all of this. Actually, a computer is best for all of this. Sorry, you, I didn't even realize you guys got off of that swing. There you have it. That's a Pareto chart. Now, what advantage does this graph have over another graph? Well, um, it's more easy to see the disparities between the groups. It's more easy to see whichever one's the highest and see the rank order. So advantages. The rank order is visual. Yes, you can find it in the bar chart, but it's not as easy to like, see here, I can go Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, right? I'm not hopping around. I can see exactly the rank order of the categories from highest to lowest. 